Good evening. My name is Amanda Campbell, and I am speaking tonight as the Vice President of Fairfax County Special Education PTA. I and my fellow board members had a chat going during the return to school work session the other night, and one of the refrains repeated over and over throughout the meeting was, where are our special education teachers? These are the teachers that have been back in the buildings the longest. The teachers that have been teaching concurrently for weeks, not as pilots, but as a default requirement to meet the needs of their students. These are teachers who serve some of our most vulnerable populations and most certainly have a unique and valuable perspective to share. And yet FCPS administration has not represented them in any of these work sessions. FCPS has not even included their classrooms in their picture-perfect videos showing examples of concurrent teaching that they've been promoting on their social media pages. As an organization dedicated to representing the needs of students, parents, and teachers alike, we are outraged at how, on one hand, special education has been propped up as the prime example of why students need to be back in school buildings, while on the other hand, FCPS repeatedly glosses over the unique challenges and needs this population has and refuses to bring their voices to the table. SEPTA has been forwarding concerns to the top administration for weeks regarding the lack of PPE availability that we have been hearing about from teachers across the county. For central office staff to then turn around and say that there are no shortages and that everyone has what they need, it is dishonest. Full stop. If you had had a special education teacher at the table at the work session, you would have heard about this directly from them. It is not a single school issue. The PPE issues are just one more example of the systemic problem that FCPS has in implementing anything district-wide with fidelity. What is being done to address it? What systems are being set up to track the PPE delivered at each school? What systems are being put in place within every school to track the supply of PPE and who has or needs what supplies? These systems must be consistent in order to be effective. It cannot be left to individual schools to determine how to do this. The county needs centralized leadership if any return to school plan is going to be effective across all schools. I have personally heard from multiple special education teachers who are now choosing to leave the profession entirely because of how they are being treated by FCPS because of the misrepresentation by FCPS central office in the meeting on Thursday night. You have data presented at this meeting regarding teacher separations. Why is this data yet again not disaggregated for special education? Why are we as SEPTA always having to come to these meetings to ask for that data? Why is it not automatically generated? How many of the teachers that have chosen to separate are special education teachers? How many IAs that are separating our special education IAs? Special education teachers and support staff have been severely understaffed for years prior to COVID. What do you think is going to happen to the students in these classrooms when even more choose to leave? As my colleague Diane Cooper-Gold states in her testimony tonight, we want kids back in buildings. We know the desperate need that exists. As a parent of a child who spends a large part of her day in a Cat B setting, I can personally attest to this. But each time we come to a new return to school work session, some major part of the plan makes a 180 degree turn. This time it was the moving of the metrics. What's it gonna be next time? Moving to three feet distancing instead of six feet distancing in order to resolve the classroom space shortages? It's certainly been hinted at. It's been clear for weeks, including since before the last work session, that COVID numbers are rising steadily. The time for reactive planning is gone. Stop ignoring what is happening on the ground because it doesn't fit the narrative that FCPS Communications wants to put forth. Acknowledge the realities we are all facing and make proactive changes. Practice the inclusion you preach by including the voices of your special education teachers and support staff. Thank you.